They say a good traveler has no fixed plans and isn't intent on arriving, and that's exactly the kind of traveler I am. A few months before the war, I had the opportunity to visit Palestine, a part of the world not many get to experience. While exploring Jordan, I would see the twinkling lights of Jerusalem at night across from the Dead Sea and couldn't help but think about how this place, so rich in holiness, is also filled with such tension. It called me. Getting to the border was a bit of a journey itself. An Uber, a taxi, and two buses with numerous checkpoints until we finally arrived at the Israeli border. This five kilometer ride took approximately over an hour. After a few days exploring Jerusalem, I felt a strong urge to experience what life was like on the other side of the wall in Palestine. Hiring a Palestinian taxi driver from Jerusalem for safety, uh, I have to admit, I was pretty nervous because of all the scary stories in the media about the region. However, when I reached Bethlehem, it felt like entering a whole different world. Warm smiles, a mix of pleasure and slight sadness. I was welcomed with open arms by a sweet Palestinian family that I stayed with. My short stay there included witnessing the ongoing rocket crossfire between Israel and Gaza, which was unnerving for me, but part of their everyday life. Travel changes you, and it should. Let me tell you, that experience changed me, and I feel so incredibly fortunate to have had it. So, here's my story from that time in Palestine. Wow, I am in Palestine. Can't believe it. What's your name? Abra. Jessica, hey. nice oh, to meet you. Thank you so much. <laughs> so we just reached my hotel. It's called the Bread House. Here, let me help you with this, it's heavy. Thank you, I'm Jessica. Jessica, I'm Nahida. Nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. Your place is very nice. Wow. I want to go to the wall, the wall that separates Israel and Palestine. There's lots of art there. It's a very interesting, unique place. So he said I can take a taxi, which will be like 15, 20 shekels there. Yes. I want to go to the wall. Yalla, yalla. <laughs> America. Nice. You are welcome. Thank you so much. This is the famous one. Oh, wow. Yeah, famous banks. Ask the tourists, ask the group, just go visit Bethlehem and back. Visit the church and back. Ah, so Don't. just the church and that's it. Exactly, exactly. So this bus is coming from Jerusalem. From Jerusalem, it's from Tel Aviv. From Jewish Jerusalem. guide. The tour guide Jewish, exactly. For the so group. he's not giving them a proper exactly, tour. Exactly, because don't like tourist support here. Uh, ah. you so they're uh, just going to the church? Is to that the it? church, visit and back to Israel. Ah. Yeah. Okay, so we are going to a refugee, a refugee camp, camp called Ada, Ada Camp. Ada Camp, exactly. Ada camp. Ada camp. These people live here before 1948. Wow. Yes, you see, 1948. Wow. See? Yeah. Is this a cemetery? Tomb, tomb. Yeah. Yeah. tomb for uh, yeah. refugee camp. I wish I had more money to give them, but that's all I have. I wasn't prepared. Oh. 
So we are just coming up to the wall. The wall so this yes. is where you go back to Israel. Israel, exactly. Okay. Yes, exactly. Wow. It's the wall now. It's a big wall. Yeah. Here, this side, Palestinian side. Behind the wall, Israeli side. The wall, you know, 850 kilometer around West Bank. Wow. 850 kilometer around wow. West Bank, yeah. When did they start building the wall? 2002. The year is 2002. Yeah, yeah and about 21 years now, the wall. 21 years. <laughs> I like this. Make tea, not war. Yeah. <laughs> The separation wall in the West Bank is a significant structure that stretches for hundreds of kilometers, dividing Palestinian territories from Israeli settlements. It consists of concrete barriers, fences, and checkpoints intended to control movement between the two areas. Alongside the wall, there is often a wealth of graffiti, murals, and messages expressing the sentiments of the Palestinian people, including protest art and statements of resistance. I think this is my favorite one. Because yeah. I love hummus. I go, <laughs> typical football. And yes, follow me. You don't have a chance to move around. To travel in, like Israeli. To Israeli people traveling and go here and there. And they are lie and people believe them. They change the stories. The lie story, be everyone believe it, it's a real story. Our real story, people feel they are lie story. Why is the propaganda of the media? And they have the power, control, everything. They are stupid enough. All right, so we are about to go into the Wald Hotel, which is pretty famous around here. It's a uh, I looked into staying here, but it's like super, super expensive. Whoa, lots of tourists. Is it your first time here? It is, yeah. So we're going to have the original artworks of Black Sea. Inside we have a museum that talks about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict in all history. And upstairs there's an art gallery that watches art pieces made by the Israeli artists. Adjacent to the towering separation wall is the haunting Waldorf Hotel. This unique establishment serves as a stark reminder of the realities of life in Palestine. Its walls adorned with pognant artwork and messages of hope and defiance offer a glimpse into the struggles faced by the Palestinian people. The hotel also houses a museum and art gallery, providing visitors with further insight into the region's rich history and ongoing challenges. Outside is the wall. What did they tell you? Hi, Tishrim. You tell you, you. Uh, uh, hi, hi. <laughs> yeah. First time, home. She, uh, the children, first time see woman, same you. Hi. Oh, wow. I'm happy. You tell beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> لا لا بقول هاي انتم بتقول عنها طويلة أول مرة. خليها تدينا مصاري كل. لا يا زمان سارك عيب يلا حبيبي سلام. سلام. الله يرزقكم. هم مصاري. Alright so I am heading back to the old city. Old city. After the tour, there was some confusion about where I was returning as the driver thought I meant Old City Jerusalem when in fact I meant Old City Bethlehem. I thought we were in Palestine, but we have to go through another border and I have to take a bus back. When I got to the end of the hall, there were several Israeli security agents asking for my passport. That's when I quickly realized the confusion and headed back. go through all this just to go back to my hotel oh my god I don't even have my passport <laughs> he told me to go through here to go to Old Town but it's actually going to Israel Jerusalem I'm staying in Bethlehem I, I have no idea like <laughs> how I'm gonna get back to Bethlehem where all my stuff is <laughs> Oh 
Hi. Bethlehem. Nativity. Nativity. Israel, yes. I'm going Bethlehem. My hotel is Bethlehem. Oh. What is the hotel? You tell me in the Nativity. 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 Oh, okay. Okay, come. Yeah. Okay, okay. Oh my god. This is crazy. Wow. You tell me all town Jerusalem. No, I say I'm all. sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, I thought you think I thought you knew okay. that I was no, staying here. It's good chance that God like you because I am wet. Look, I am wet. I think you know you know where you go. No, Believe me. No, 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 no. Sleep here. Yes. Tell me you sleep in Bethlehem. <laughs> no, I told you. I'm sorry. I thought sorry. you know old town Bethlehem. No problem. It's okay. Which the name hotel for you here? That's why I was wondering why you were saying you were dropping me off. I didn't understand what <laughs> well, what you meant. I was like, why are you dropping me off? You picked me up at my hotel. Uh, oh, crazy! What the? Travel is not always pretty, <laughs> <laughs> but it changes you, and it should. Interesting for you. Very interesting for you. <laughs> Very interesting. The old building. Look, this is old I love store. the colors. Yeah, because old town. Yeah. So we're just getting back into old town Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Wow, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Now, exactly from here, the right down. Okay. Look beautiful. Wow. When I finally got back to Old Town Bethlehem after quite the ordeal, I randomly asked someone where I could exchange some cash, and that's where I met Aladdin, a shopkeeper in the area. He brought me into a money exchange office and asked if I liked tea. And that's when I met Sammy, the tea guy. Colonel O'Brien just came here and there is a guy they met with him a nice, funny, like, a documentary about like the tea and the stuff. Sammy, he's a famous guy for the tea and the coffee in Bethlehem. Sammy, baby, puffer. Hi Sammy, I heard good things about you. We can look. <laughs> Nice yeah, to meet, meet you. you. A pleasure. You can see here, and you can see his picture with Colonel O'Brien. Show her. Show her your picture with Colonel. <laughs> He's the best tea guy in the town, and you will love his tea. Oh wow, that is so cool. <laughs> yes. When did he come? He's coming before, I think, five years ago. Okay. He's coming here, and we filmed together very fun film. Me and them together. You were filming something. Yes, we, me and them on YouTube. Well, you're going to be on YouTube again because you I'm so a much. YouTuber. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> well, let me try some of your tea. Yalla. <laughs> Just know about your sugar. No sugar. No sugar. Yeah, I'm an L.A. girl, so we don't, we don't like sugar. It ages you. Because you are sweet enough. <laughs> you are welcome. You come from Los Angeles. Yes. My name is Aladdin. Nice to meet you. I'm born here. Nice to meet you too. I'm born here. I love from the wheel back in Los Angeles to come to visit us here. Forget what did you hear about us here. It's more friendly people, lovely people, and really safe more than DC for you here. I promise you. I give you my guarantee. Safer than DC. Safer than DC. I promise you. I, I, that. I, I, I for you. It. For I a foreigner. It. Uh, there's so many random shootings in America. Yes, yes. So because when people say be careful, I'm like, wait a minute. There's like shootings in America exactly. every day. Every day back in Texas, I heard what's going on. Yeah. Do you know why, guys? Because of what the license you give it to the women, everything. And teenage, when you give them a weapon, they will do crazy things. Thanks God, thanks God for everything I didn't touch in my life. Me either. And we would love to get some people here in Bethlehem. It's a beast here. It's lovely. Yalla, Yalla. Bethlehem. <laughs> you will love it, you will wow. love it. I promise you on that. Full organic treatments. Look. <laughs> wow, look at that. Many, many things herb she will put. I think you will not calculate how many herb you will put inside. Wow. What type of tea is that? Black tea. Sammy tea. Sammy tea. Yes, Sammy tea. Famous, really. <laughs> Enjoy your tea. Thank you. I will. Well, the day sure ended lovely. I'm sitting having some authentic Palestinian tea where Conan O'Brien had tea and shot a segment here. This is pretty amazing. What do you want to see? You want to see the real life? 
I want to see the real life. You want to eat very good cook? Eat. You want to you wanna see how Palestinians live? Yes. And you want to see how they eat and yes. what they will eat? Yes. Done. You know, you are in the right place. You start from the beginning with Sami. Sami, and I have nice to Nice to meet you. This tea is so good. Thank you so much. Best tea Enjoy I've it. ever had in my Enjoy life. Enjoy it. I am very happy. <laughs> Show us the tea you got. I wanted an authentic experience, and I got one. Ask and you shall receive. Right, Sammy? <laughs> Welcome. Anytime. Welcome to Bethlehem. I am waiting you for Sammy's tea. Come to try my delicious tea with men, cinnamon, sage, thyme, ginger, coriander, rosemary, lemon, two seeds of cardamom, and rose. And it is amazing. Thank you. <laughs> I'm with Aladdin. Hey. He's taking me to go eat. How amazing is that? I yes. love the hospitality we are going here. To eat. Authentic food. Yes. Mm. We're good to taste the Palestinian food. Yay. I've never had Palestinian guys. food before. On the way to dinner, I caught a glimpse of the controversial Israeli settlements, past the separation wall, and finally arrived at one of Bethlehem's finest local restaurants, according to Aladdin. Oh, wow. So you're coming here and watch this. Another rubber Amazing. Food is coming. Wow, look at that. Thank you. Everyone is so nice here. Yes. Friendly, as, yeah. as I told you. Exactly. It's safe, friendly, Very people comfortable. love everything, you know. That's it. Oh, wow. You will Look love that. that. Yes. I don't judge. I don't judge. Thank you so much. Look at all this food. It's great. Wow, we are having a feast here. I've never had Palestinian food. This is my first time. Yeah, just this number one, you know. There's like many, you know. Yeah. There's like, you know, 100, 100 different tasty foods. You will love. This is just number one, you know. I am having lamb. It's not cow. <laughs> it's not cow, right? <laughs> I swear it's I've actually you never this, you know, it's different. I've never had lamb before. Mm. It's good. It I'm just so hungry right now I would literally eat anything. Me too. So this is what is this? This one called tabula. Tabula. Yeah. Hummus. Hummus. Yes. Potatoes. And what's that? Salad with tiny. How do you say in Arabic, uh, yeah. bon appetit? Sahten afia. Sahten afia. So good. So we just came to a sweet shop. Wow. Mm. Look at this. I was just telling Aladdin I don't eat sweets. And he's no, no, still you, you should here. start that one uh, special. <laughs> That's one, the special one. Okay. When That's in Palestine. <laughs> It's made of cheese and the flour grounding, like. But this one, it's one of the best, the sweet and healthy sweet you will have in your life. Okay. It's good looking up. Healthy sweets. How yeah, about that? Yeah, it's like dry. That's a plastic dry. You will love it. You are right. It does taste like a healthy sweet. <laughs> I think there is no healthy sweet in the world, but this, at least, you know, we said, less dangerous. That's one of the best at drag.
again. So this is the breakfast room. Wow, so cute. I am having a feast right now. Look at this, falafel, olives, jam. This is hard boiled? Hard yes. boiled egg? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I love my life. <laughs> I put you on my video? Yes, Dad. Come on. Come on, come on. So this is the wonderful Palestinian family that I've been staying with at the bread house here in Bethlehem. What is your name? Nahida. You? Jack. Andraus. Nice to meet you guys. Me too. Welcome Thank to you. Bethlehem and the Bread House. Yes. Thank you. I really like staying here and I appreciate your hospitality. Food is very good. <laughs> you are Thank very you nice. For you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. welcome. Thank you. We are coming. <laughs> oh, this is not the place to try to be sexy. Make sure you cover. Don't show your legs. Don't show too much skin. You don't want to be sexy here. There's so many other places that you can be sexy, but not here. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm good. So sweet. So this is what I'm wearing. I'm wearing a dress, and then I have my leggings to cover my legs. So I'm just taking a walk down the moon road here in Old Town Bethlehem looking for some good coffee. <laughs> Wait a minute. I just have to check this out. <laughs> this is too funny. Hi, good morning. How are you? You have an iced mocha? Yeah. You need mocha? Yeah, iced. This is too funny. I'm dead right now. Have you I ever had know. Starbucks? Yes, I, I like Stars and Bucks. <laughs> Well, after I do the taste test, I'll let you know if I like stars and bucks more than Starbucks. Oh wow, thank you. Oh my god, my first stars and bucks coffee. Look at that. Hmm. Sometimes knockoffs are better than the real thing. <laughs> This is so good. So this is where I've been staying. It is the old town here in Bethlehem. It's probably the most tourist area here, but it is also very safe to stay yes, here. Well, you are very nice. Thank you, you, you too. Do you guys like my new outfit? So cute. I just went into Aladdin store and asked if I can borrow a robe to go into the church. <laughs> Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm Fine. good, how are you? <laughs> oh, thank you. you. Just look at uh, No, I don't want to look. <laughs> I want to look at Jesus. <laughs> I want to see where Jesus was born. All right, guys, so I am about to go into the church where Jesus was born. How amazing is that? Oh, watch your head. <laughs> Whoa. I was shocked by the long line and didn't want to wait for hours. A guide suggested that I try my luck by entering through the exit door. Uh, not everyone was so lucky. I just went through another door and they allowed me to go. So I bypassed everything. There's always a way. 
This is where Jesus was born. This is where Jesus was born. Wow. Hey guys, so I just left the old city of Bethlehem and I am going to the city of Hebron with my wonderful guide, Light. How are you? Hi everyone, <laughs> how are you? Good to see you. So how is this city? What is this city about? What's it like? The city of Hebron located south of Bethlehem and it's one of the oldest cities in the Holy Land because it has been very, very well known as the Patriarch Tombs. This the Patriarch they were living over with, uh, for example, Prophet Abraham, uh, Sarah, uh, Jacob's wife, Sarah, wow. she was also living over there, and then all the prophets, they were get buried over there. The Abrahami Mosque, they call it, it actually now these days, we're going to see the city center of, of Hebron, and it's under Palestinian control, everybody lives there. But beside this, I would love to tell you that the city of Hebron, it has one famous religious site for Christians and uh, sorry for Muslims and Jewish. It's very famous for both for Jewish. Wow. And What's Muslims, the name of that? The Patriarch Tombs. Wow. Yeah, that's a mosque now these days. It's a mosque. Uh, it, that building, it had been built during the late 4th century by King Herod the Great, Herodotus. He was a really big Roman wow. king con controlling the area over here. And then he built the whole building that we are going to see over the cave, over the tomb belongs for the Patriarch, Patriarch tombs. So not many tourists venture out of Bethlehem to explore other parts of the region. So I'll be honest, life, I have some concerns. I am a little nervous. Is this safe for me to be going into as a foreigner? More than safe. It's, <laughs> it's safe, yeah. You know, because it's under Palestinian control. And we are, as a Palestinian, we are very hospitality people. We are accepting everybody as a, you know, you are more than welcome. Just feel at your home. We are welcoming everybody. And actually, it's even more safe than in New York City. Wow. <laughs> All right, guys. So we just stopped at the Hebron Glass and Ceramics Center. Let's find out how they make glass. Yalla. It was fascinating to witness the glass making process firsthand. The handmade ceramic crafts were incredibly unique and beautiful. Although I was tempted to purchase some items, my frequent travels to other countries made me hesitant to risk anything breaking. Nonetheless, it was a memorable experience. We're going to walk through the old city of Paper. Uh, this is the older part of the city of Fribourg. We saw already really a newer part comparing with this one. It's back to the Crusaders period and even a way earlier than that. So we are just entering the old town here in Hebron. Wow. Everyone is so nice and friendly and waving hi to me. Alright, so we are about to enter a checkpoint. I cannot film, but this is what it's like. Hey, 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 hey,
اجنبي لا لا في اجنبي من داعش في لا ما احلاه Hey, how are you? Is this the mosque? This is this part of the mosque. You know, like what I say, the whole building was built by King Herod the Great, and it was divided later on after the war in the 1994, and there was a really big massacre over here. There was Israeli. So later on, whatever, there was really big problems between Christian, uh, sorry, between Muslims and Jewish over here, and whatever. This, the result was divided by part of it by Muslims and the bigger part by the Israeli. I like this color better too. <laughs> this is a so I just maybe, put it over my head. Maybe exactly. Maybe just like maybe. kind of respecting the holy yes. place. Yeah. This part of the building, you can see there's Israeli commerce. Even, even this, is, this is Israeli camera. Uh, Israeli comments. Camera, camera. Security cameras watching us. Oh, cameras. So we are just leaving the mosque slash checkpoint. Uh, uh, what is this? Uh, this is uh, here, if you stand here, you see the settlement. Jewish family live on top of this building. Oh, okay. uh, they keep throwing all kind of garbage and trash. We put this hotel in there just a kind of rotation. They're throwing garbage and trash? Yeah. And sometimes uh, liquid. Mashallah. They pour liquid, like dirty water, bleach, urine. And all that happen in front urine. of the soil. Yeah, sometimes. But most oh. of the time, sink water <laughs> from uh, these windows uh, uh, down to here. Especially when the market is busy and crowded. But uh, if it's empty, there is no point in throwing things because the aim is to empty the city. And they manage and succeed in doing that because a lot of shopkeepers leave this area because they can do living anymore. They move to the area which is called H1 or Hebron 1. This is controlled by the Palestinian Authority. But this side is fully controlled by the Israeli army. Okay. That's why you see most of the shops are closed. Just 10, 15 percent of the shopkeepers remain here. Either they can't afford to leave, uh, to buy or to rent shops in the new city. Some of them just take it, just kind of resistance to stay around here. Yeah. To me, it's completely a different story because my shop is a heritage from the family. My grandfather was here, my father was here, and I am now, and I would like to keep it as long as I live. And this is a historical place at the same time. Of course. Because we have an old sesame press from the Ottoman time inside it. Uh, uh, that's uh, why we keep encouraging everybody to come to this area to make it life like before. And we encourage them to support this area and support us by buying things from the shop that help us a lot to stay in Italy. You're welcome. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for that history lesson. You're welcome. What's your uh, name? Hisham. Jessica. Nice yeah. to meet you. Okay, Jessica. <laughs> oh, yeah. So this is... So just above here is the Israeli settlement and the shopkeeper was telling us that this is where they throw lots of trash, right? They throw lots of trash, as you can see. And these things happened many times. Many Palestinians were shot by Israeli settlers and many Palestinian people were uh, under bad uh, positions because they walk in this road. And also there is watching Israeli towers there. And also there is other watching tower there. Mm -hmm. And if any Palestinian will complain to Israeli soldiers, Israeli will not 
response. Israel immediately will stand beside of the second. This new reality has pushed many Palestinian families to leave and get other uh, yeah, place because this area is not safe for them and a lot of people started giving up. And most of the violations and the crimes, or I should say most of the attacks happened. Why? Because this is the main road between H1 and H2. We have uh, this historical place. Wow. This uh, is a beautiful shop. This, Look at this. Oh this, my god. This is uh, from Al Mamluk era, uh, 850 years old for the building. Oh. We have here a press or a mill from the Ottoman time, the Turkish time. They used to grind sesame seeds to produce tahini and sesame oil, and they used to move it by a camel. Wow. Here is a photo of the camel from 1920. Oh my God. It uh, shows how the camel used to walk around the press wow. and grind. They used to cover the camel eyes while he's walking around in case he feels dizzy or fall down. Wow. Uh, here we use the sesame oil for cooking, making sweets, and we use it as well as a kind of alternative treatment, especially for treating asthma. They use to rub it on the chest or take a teaspoon. Very good cure for asthma. I even put it a little pouch for tourists because they're not allowed to hold much liquid on the airplane. What is she shooting? <laughs> Uh, I can summarize the situation in short sentences. Palestinians are bad people. Palestinians are not having any opportunity to feel they are free. Palestinians are facing all the methods of the apartheid and discrimination and violations and ethnic cleansing and also slowly collective punishment. And Palestinians are not having any right even to defend on themselves. Israeli government always accusing them of terrorism, incitement, or all these things. So we want people to feel happy to, uh, uh, and also to, 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 as we say in English, to make uh, 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 ha uh, happiness by hands, but the happiness cannot after touring Hebron, we headed back to Bethlehem, which is approximately an hour and 40 minutes away. This is really good. Israeli soldiers are watching us right now, and that's the watchtower. After experiencing a lot of heavy stuff, I decided to have lunch and listen to some soft music to process it all. It wasn't easy. Wow, this looks so good. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Later, I walked around and watched young kids trying to fly their makeshift kite. It was heartwarming to see them finding joy despite the difficult conditions that they live in. Hey guys, so after I was eating, I walked back to the wall and I went and bought some items and I met, what's your name? Mustafa, I am a Palestinian tour guide and we are here in the refugee camp. This is the place where I born and I grew up. I'm taking your friend to saw my community. Let's go. Yalla, yalla. <laughs> so I came here yesterday, as you remember in the vlog, but um, I think the taxi cab driver didn't want to take the time to give me a proper tour. So, you meet everyone by divine reason. I'm getting a proper tour right now. So this is um, not really a refugee camp anymore, It right? used to be a refugee camp, and it's still called a refugee camp. This place was 
established by the United Nations in the year of 1948. The United Nations, they built the tent here. So the place where we are now, once back in the history, it used to be all tent. But step by step, we talk about here about 75 years. 75 years is enough time for the people to move ahead from the tent to the shelter to the irregular houses that we are going to see now. Back in the 70s, the United Nations, they proposed to build concrete houses for the refugees. And that's how, in the beginning, the refugees, they refused. But later on, step by step, the, uh, the people start to like, Yes, that's my baby. Oh my God. Yes, Baba. Hi. 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 This is my family. Yeah. Oh, wow. Should be. Now I feel like I'm seeing the real Palestine. This is real life. Salam. <laughs> what happened here? They're doing some renovations yes. or what? Uh, the camp here is not part of the city. The camp until now is under the United Nations responsibility, part of the Palestinian Authority. So, Beit Lahim and Sibilati. What was this? This building used to be my kindergarten. Oh, wow. Amal. This, which one? This, this one. Oh, wow. What is it now? It's still a kindergarten. <laughs> and this is my teacher, Amal. She was killed by the Israelis. Which one? Amal. God, In 1991, Instead, after I graduate from the kindergarten, she was assassinated by the Israeli. Wow. So this place, because we are surrounded by the Israeli military camp from four sides, we have military camp on one side and the wall on the other side where we can just like do short drive now. So you grew up here? This and is you where I grew up. Still this is here. where I'm still living. So as you must have seen, seen so much. As you see, I see many much, I was witnessing many much. What is this? This is one of the murders, he was killed. Whenever you see uh, uh, black and white pictures, graffiti on the wall, that's mean murder. And even this sign, this is murder, he was killed in 2015. Even in, he, in his way back from school. This is the small house we see, this is the only house from the 60s, last time all the houses was built by the United Nations. Mustafa and his kids kindly dropped me off near my hotel. I savored a cup of tea while taking in the stunning views from a nearby rooftop cafe before making my way back to my hotel. Hey guys, so I just got back to my Airbnb um, with my wonderful host and we're literally just watching rockets back and forth, back and forth. It's just really crazy. It's crazy, right? Why? Why? It's really sad. Yes. Yeah. What is that? Peace. 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 May all beings everywhere be happy and free, and may the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to that happiness and to that freedom for all.